Well, greetings again from South Carolina. This is David Gillespie. At some point in your Model A ownership, you will most definitely probably have to replace the top. So that is what this two-part series will begin to explore, is how I replace the top on my 1930 Model A two-door sedan. If you like this type of content, please consider subscribing. It really helps out the channel. Give us a thumbs up and hit the notification bell. Okay, so I'm going to take this seam here and fill it full of Gorilla Tape. That may help the vinyl not to show that crease so bad. As per my friend Stephen Reed, the Les Andrews of Australia. Okay, and so for those two holes there, same thing. The Gorilla Tape. And there's the hole. The holes. Plural. And one hole. That will hopefully keep some water out of that for some Step time. Step number one. I'm taking some super thin cotton cloth and cutting it into one inch by 42 inch long strips to cover the roof ribs. I'll show you what I mean. Starting with a little glue here. I'm going to put the cloth strip on right on top of it there. I mean, they're a half an inch strip, so I'm just taking, dabbing it down into the glue here. Getting it all the way across the roof rib. There we go. One down, eight more to go. So I'm going to check with a bed sheet. I've got an old bed sheet here. And I'm using the bed sheet to check from here down to here any high spots or obvious humps. I do have one right there where the two pieces of the side cap come together. I know about that one. So <clears throat> but the bed sheet works good to get it tight. And you can see we're going for flawless here, according to Mr. Reed. The Les Andrews of Australia. Here's another view from the front of the bed sheet. So, looks like everything is hitting about right. Hoping that'll pitch water there. This would be the main area of concern right here, where those two pieces of the body come together. So I'm gonna see about, I've got some Gorilla Tape underneath of it. I'm gonna see about that. Fix that. This is what happens when you're working on your top and you don't cover it at night. You come out the next day and find that you've got unwanted guests, such as our little buddy here. I like to have the office time getting him out. Thankfully, he left me only a few little gifts in there, but uh, didn't really make too bad a mess. Right at home. Hmm. Okay, so next the chicken wire. And I've just got it set up here right now. But I've taken a little finish nail and I have tacked one every six inches along both sides, the driver's side, and the passenger side. And I'm gonna start at the front, right behind the visor here. And I'm gonna put a few nails in the front and work from the center toward the back, leaving these unhooked for now. So right behind the visor here, in the very middle, I've attached a finish nail to the header, just as a temporary hoop to go over this, uh, portion of the chicken wire another one there so i've got a little bit of a strong point in the middle now i'm going to pull with all my pressure straight back to the rear okay center. so now i'm at the rear center of the car i've got two nails holding the front only nothing else is attached so now i'm going to pull all this wire forward just like so and i've already got me one little nail just started right here and I'm gonna get this one 
hooked over that nail okay now i've got good tension going from here down the middle and i'm going to work my way over it all starts from the center and works its way okay, out i've got a second nail right here and a third nail right here and i've got those already pulled over the chicken wire over that nail i'm going to go back to the front and re-establish the whole front line and come back and stretch it this way that's the hard part the easy part is stretching from side to side now i've got a finished nail every six inches along the front right behind the visor and i've got my chicken wire set over about like as you see here so now i've got the front line fully established and i'm going to go and stretch it all to the back and then work my way side to side okay so now i've got all finished nails along the back row and as you can see i've got good coverage now i've got loops completely over the back header and it's already pretty snug and tight along the top the goal is to get it good and tight so we don't have a lot of flopping and if we do we've got the cloth on top to keep it from making noise and from scrubbing now i'm going to start in the middle on one side and work my way to the outermost extents here on the driver's side i've got a few nails uh looped over there so now i'm going to pull it tight and stretch it over to the driver's side here over a few nails that i've already got in place like right here and there's one and there's another so now we're working from the center down either way like that and just getting it nice and snug you see you getting it nice and tight and i don't have anything permanent in here these are just temporary finished nails to get me stretched out and then to apply the staples along the way you can see nice and tight so we don't get any sags sags can equal rain grips i'm going to go now and work out some of my problem areas okay so now i'm coming along with a stapler and every place i can get a staple in i'm putting a staple in and then coming back with my great great grandpa's ball peen hammer and hammering it flat and then pulling out the finish nail all along the way i'm gonna make two rows of staples back here trim off the extra but as you can see making my progress along here you can do the same just staple 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 and then pull out those finished nails that you used to stretch it tight but it's staying nice and tight there and uh, everything's going good it's looking good along the top as you can see there so staples instead of horseshoe nails seem to do better the horseshoe nails i can't hold them still staples are working Now as I'm going along with the staples, I'm going and also just pulling these finished nails out. Working my way along. So it's getting dark now, but I think you can see kind of the gist of what's going on here. Got nice tight. That's a piece of paper there. Got nice tight um chicken wire stiff and tight it's looking good hallelujah okay so lastly coming back across the rear header here i'm going to clip some of these wires that are too long and the other ones i'm going to fold them down and tuck them down in there the main thing being so there's nothing sticking up that can puncture the top fabric. So I think I'll clip that one and then 
tuck those ends down and maybe put another staple down there to hold it steady. Alright, last view. That's the chicken wire ready for the sheet. Okay, so our little top kit came from Cartouche. I got this from Smith & Jones out of Columbia, South Carolina. Ready, go. Three, go. Okay, so now I'm taking my pencil and coming around the perimeter and marking where it is I need to cut with the scissors. Feeling along the way there. Okay, so now I just started with a staple on one corner, pull diagonal and stapled it. Started with this staple here and pull diagonal there. Now I'm going about every 12 inches along the way. And if I have any excess, I'm just kind of tucking it in between the body of the car and the uh, uh, the edge of the pieces here, just like that. So a staple about every foot. Okay, now as I get around to the final side, the other side of there is tacked. I'm gonna pull it and try to get some of those wrinkles out, stretch it tight, and then staple it. All right, so now for the cotton padding gonna throw it over next there's the cotton sheet underneath and this is the the mat part and I'm gonna take and basically trace the same template around that as I did for the lower one because we want that cotton mat in this case I'm gonna do it a little bit different than the instructions I'm gonna put the cotton mat to right there and to right there and cut it just the same template as I did the under sheet then we're going to put a army blanket to cover the final pieces there okay so making a template out of your cotton sheet underneath then you can know with confidence you're cutting the cotton matting so i want it to fit just right down in there like so then we're going to put a blanket over the top of all of it and be done with it so on the back here i don't want it to be exactly the same as the cotton sheet I want to feather it out and maybe come about halfway up this header here. So I'm going to cut it somewhere in this neighborhood here. Next, I've gone around and just put a few staples, one in the corners, to hold the padding down and make sure when this is compressed, it fits down within this groove here. And then along the back, I have split the rear header with my cut right there, just like that. And then just kind of rolled it around the edge like so. This seam right here was very high and very low here. And I went inside and added a few uh, washers to build, to build this side up. And once you put the Gorilla Tape over it like that, and by the time we put that blanket over it, then the top material, we're going to hope and pray that that'll hide almost all of that. It entirely. All right, next I'm coming along with a strip of easy release masking tape so that I can mark the actual slots that the wood is so that I'm not going to nail into metal, so to speak. I'm going to transfer those marks over to there. Something like that there. Just knocks the two ends and draw a line between so I know where to Okay, go. next if you can take your butyl rubber and squeeze it into any holes that may be present to keep water from seeping in after you have marked the holes so that you know where to nail after you come back and spread it thin and I've just used a piece of plastic or something to kind of rub it down in there and get it as thin as I can but fill the holes as best as I possibly could. I have this piece of wool that we're going to use to stretch over the top 
right underneath of the vinyl. And this, you could probably use a thin wool blanket or an army blanket. I just wanted to show you how thick it is. It's about a sixteenth of an inch thick. An eighth might be pushing it. It's about a sixteenth of an inch thick. But the trick is it needs to be at least 60 to 61 inches wide for a two-door to stretch over the sides to make sure you have enough width to come down to this apex here. So 64 is the measurement on mine. You might want to check yours. This here is 60 and a quarter. So if it has plenty of stretch, we want to get it good and tight. So there I've we have taken go. and measured the direct center of this and marked it with a piece of chalk. So when I get up there, I'm not really having to guess so much so I don't have so much to stretch. Up with the center of my hood, you can see I'm just a little bit off, so I'm gonna move it to the left, okay. to the right. So now that we've got it center, I'm gonna roll it out, and get going. Okay. And I've got the padding just over top of the header there and coming to the back line of this ridge right here. Maybe a half to three quarters of an inch back this side of that ridge right there. And I'm gonna bring the fabric right up to the middle of that ridge. But I'm gonna staple it back here on the header, starting in the middle and working my way to the outer edges to get it good and snug. So I'm going to put my first one right there. Hold it with both hands, but I'm just going to tell you, I'm going to now come all the way to the edge, give it a good snug fit, and I'm going to staple again on the edge here. Just like that right there. Come over to the other side and repeat. Next, I'm going to attach some spray glue onto this roof cap here only not on the uh, padding and not below but just right along this roof cap here and I'm using Gorilla spray adhesive heavy duty any type of fabric adhesive from my understanding should be fine but uh, this is heavy duty stuff permanent not temporary stuff I had a lot of pollen out lately so I'm gonna wipe off any of the pollen first to make sure I get a good adhesion. Alright, so here we go. I'm going to put that spray adhesive on. It's supposed to wait 60 seconds for it to dry. And I'm using the cardboard here to kind of mask it so I don't get it on my car, windows and things. Now that the glue has cured on this driver's side, now I'm going to go and pop these staples back out. Alright, so now from the passenger side of the car, after removing all the front staples, I pulled it super tight and put a tack in right here. Just a little finish nail with a big head so I can pull it back out. It's just brass. Get it good and snug that way. And I'm going to work my way back over to there and just tack it in place temporarily, putting it down in the wood about an eighth of an inch. Just like that right there. Okay, so now having this side glued, the driver's side, and the front temporarily tacked, now I'm going to come to the back center. I'm just going to give it a good snug pull, and I'm going to tack one in the middle, work my way out to the edges, so that way we'll have three edges fully tacked or We've made it to this part of the video, it means we're at the end of part number one. So we'll start part number two next time, Lord willing. We'd appreciate it if you would please consider subscribing. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time, Lord willing.